In the world of bovine livestock, one can find numerous diseases that can affect the production of our animals. We often don't pay attention when bovine cattle show signs of discomfort or disease, such as limping. Today, zootechnician Ivan Castaño will share his knowledge with us and give us an in-depth look at foot disease in bovine livestock. I decided to become a zootechnician when I was a little boy because I always cared about animal welfare and I was always interested in the productive use of these animals. There comes a time in my life when I decided to travel to the United States for many reasons, and to my surprise, I found that in Florida there is a great cattle ranch with a long tradition that's been in the market for 80 years, and I had the opportunity to go work at this ranch. It's a ranch located in central Florida, in Okeechobee County, called MacArthur Farms. It's a dairy farm that currently has over 8,000 milking cows, and I had the chance to work in one of the production clusters, where they milk anywhere between 2,000 and 2,300 cows every day. Como es una finca tan grande, hay un sector llamado el hospital. Since it's such a large farm, there is an area called the hospital, and that is where I started working. Once there, I saw firsthand the importance that the owners of the farm gave to cows that were limping. There was a person solely dedicated to helping cows that limped, and in all cases, if a cow showed a limp, she would be treated that same day, or at most, she would be treated the following day. So that is where I started to see why these people paid so much attention to limping cows, despite the many other diseases that would arise. And as time passed and I continued working there, I realized that limping cows could generate large production losses. And that is how I began my profession as a specialist in bovine podology. It is not uncommon to find in our livestock ranches, either dairy farms or beef ranches, a great variety of limps, which are primarily brought about by environmental factors, nutritional causes, management errors, and lastly, genetic factors. If we analyze nutritional factors, we can see that insofar as we increase our production demands, we end up subjecting our livestock to dietary regimes that are very high in carbohydrates. This has the unwanted consequence that it kills the bacterial population in the rumen, which is the one that does the real metabolic work. In turn, this causes a buildup of endotoxins in the circulatory system and it starts to cause the beginning of laminitis, which affects the microcirculation in the hooves, and it starts to cause considerable tissue inflammation. Another relevant factor is management by humans. When these people go to round up the cattle and move them aggressively to the milking areas, they are subjecting the animals to a high degree of stress on their legs. Since they often have to walk across rocky terrain or on abrasive surfaces, which can often damage the hoof tissue. Another important factor is the environment. During the rainy season, it is common to find that the hooves can become soft. The hoof is composed of hygroscopic tissue, which absorbs a lot of water, which makes it susceptible to penetration by rocks, sticks, and foreign objects. This then becomes a vector for the entry of soil bacteria into the organism. Se han encontrado estudios en los cuales los toros seleccionados 
Studies have been made that found that some bulls can transmit these unwanted characteristics to their progeny, and as a result, you must keep in mind to avoid selecting bulls that present this type of problem. There is a method to determine how serious a limp is. It is graded on a scale from 1 to 5. The analysis is based on observation of the cows standing and walking, with special emphasis on observing the posture of their back. The scale grades as 1, an animal with a straight back and walking normally, up to 5, which is an animal with an arched back and a severe limp. When we communicate with the owners or with the farm technicians or with the foot specialist, it is important that even if we are communicating by phone, we should be able to clearly explain what the affected area is so that we can be on the same frequency. So if we have a cow with a problem in the wall, we know that we're going to be talking about this part of the hoof and we can even go a little deeper and we can specify, for example, if the problem is located on the axial wall, when we talk about the axial wall, that's this part here. Likewise, here on the sole, we can specify if the problem is located primarily in the bulb or heel, or if it's in the region of the sole horn, or in the region of the sole, or in the white line region. So this is a broad outline of the anatomy of the bovine foot. Next, we will discuss the origin of some of the foot problems in bovines. There are two types of foot diseases, one that is infectious in origin and one that is not infectious. Those that have infectious origins are caused by bacterial toxins. Within that group, you have various types of laminitis, chronic laminitis, acute laminitis, and subacute laminitis. Laminitis manifests itself by causing hemorrhaging. Eventually, the infectious process causing these hemorrhages creates a number of ulcers on the bottom of the hoof. That constant pressure against the ground causes this apophysis of the third phalanx to put pressure against the soft sole, and that is another symptom of laminitis, a soft sole that cannot protect the foot well, and then you have these ulcers. Also, within the group of infectious afflictions, you find digital dermatitis, interdigital dermatitis, digital cellulitis, and heel erosion. These are caused by soil bacteria, for which wet soil mixed with manure creates an ideal environment for them to invade these tissues. Digital dermatitis, otherwise known as mortellaris disease, takes place in the interdigital space in this lower area of the hoof close to the heel bulb, and it looks like some type of hairy strawberry. The hair will be different than the hair you see in the surrounding area. If interdigital dermatitis has spread through this entire space between the claws, it can start in the rear area and it can end in the front part. There are life stages and conditions where bovines can have more problems with their hooves than others. Next, we will see some of the characteristics of animals with a greater propensity to contracting these diseases. There is a group of animals that is more predisposed to suffering from foot diseases than others. We are primarily talking about animals that are in a transitional period, especially those that have recently given birth. There are other animals that have a greater predisposition, such as animals with light-colored hooves, such as Holstein cattle. 
Because of the way that bovines move, the rear legs are more afflicted than the front legs. It is calculated that 85% of limps happen in the rear legs, while only 15% happen in the front legs. Currently, we know of no other disease that can have a greater impact on our animal's health and well-being as limps. It sometimes gets to the point that we sometimes have to sacrifice the animals due to the severity of the problem. Why? When an animal is in pain, it generally secretes endorphins, and these endorphins lower their appetite. And when an animal doesn't want to eat, their body conditioning drops off, which in turn also affects their fertility. And then we have two problems, productive and reproductive problems. Going back in time to the origins of bovine pathology, we can say that the person who started the technical study of pathology was Tucson Raven, a Dutch veterinary doctor who noticed that as cattle ranches grew and expanded and started to require nutritional supplements, he started to notice that certain changes were happening in the livestock organisms, which were causing deterioration of the hoof. These transformations had not been observed before, so this veterinarian started to implement certain techniques that later gave rise to other techniques that are currently in use. Bovine pathology is the study, diagnosis, and treatment of bovine foot ailments, which in cattle is called the hoof. Why is bovine pathology necessary? Because it's necessary to implement in our overall analysis of the farm and in the management of our paddocks, protocols for hoof repair. Otherwise, you will have considerable productive and reproductive losses, and it's preferable to take preventive measures in our paddocks rather than taking corrective measures, which are therapeutic treatments, which add up to cumulative losses in the cost of medications, loss of milk, and other forms of production. And those reproductive losses are something very few people evaluate. It's difficult to quantify that type of loss, but it's large. A limp can result in incomplete uterine development and in the incomplete development of all reproductive aspects. Here we have the most important tool in podology, which offers us security for the animal as well as the operator. It's a specialized stock for hoof work, which has the following parts. First, a door where the animal comes in, then a gate. Which swings open and allows us to swing it outwards when the animal leaves the stock or when the animal moves backwards. Here we have some belts or straps, which are very helpful when it comes to suspending the animal. The animal will thus remain very calm while we carry on with our work safely. It's two straps operated by a ratchet. This is the ratchet, which allows us to adjust the rear portion and the front portion at the level of the sternum, and we can adjust it to the size of the cow. We have a very comfortable surface for her. It's not a hard surface, it's padded. So this equipment is very safe for them, as well as for us, and it allows us to work easily and do a good job. There are various ways of trimming hoofs. The first type of trim is a preventive trim. 
el recorte preventivo. Es un recorte. It's a trim that is done on hooves that show some type of overgrowth. It is recommended to perform this trim on cows that have just been weaned. And in cows that have given birth, the trim should be repeated in 60 or 90 days, since the nutritional stresses they have undergone can cause laminitis and bring about certain limbs. Ya que debido a los procesos laminíticos eh, causados por ese estrés nutricional, pre empiezan a presentar, pueden empezar a presentar ciertas cojeras. El otro método es el recorte correctivo, que es un recorte... The other method is the corrective trim, which is a curative therapeutic trim that we perform on individuals that show some type of limp. A continuación... Next, Ivan Castaño will be in charge of teaching us the procedure that is performed from the time the limp is identified until it is treated. Una vez preparado el equipo para la jornada de trabajo, once the equipment is ready for a day's work, I head out to the paddock to evaluate which animals will be treated using bovine pathology. Now we begin the process. As you can see, this is very safe. At first, the animal moves and I adjust accordingly. It's fundamental to highlight the importance of vision safety for this type of treatment. The best thing to use is either goggles or a visor, which help prevent any type of inconvenience that can affect our vision. So when we perform a hoof trim, what we're trying to achieve is a balance between the two claws so that weight is evenly distributed. In this unbalanced hoof, we can see a reddening of the tissue in this area of the sole. This hemorrhaging is due to bad posture to the uneven distribution of weight. If we had a balanced hoof, this would not be the case since it would be spreading the weight in equal proportions here in the rear of the cow. So we're going to try to eliminate this hemorrhaging. We always keep in mind the need for balance, using our median finger as a measure of height. Once we have performed the functional trim on three limbs, we are going to continue with the corrective trim in the lower posterior limb, which is the same one we identified in the field. Wherever we find an affliction, we are going to relieve pressure. We are going to clear out all of the accumulated and excess material so we can continue with the treatment. Para ya proceder al tratamiento con, bien sea con el tacón ortopédico. Either through the use of an orthopedic shoe or just topical treatment. Vamos a abrir. Okay. Esa es. I make sure that the udder is not pinched. Let's see how she reacts to the pressure. We've identified possible pain in the axial region of the middle claw. Diagnosing this animal will be difficult. Because the pain that she's showing here is not enough, I have to recheck well. After performing the three steps of the functional trim and after checking the pain in the middle claw, we have observed that there is no apparent external infection, but then we see that the sole is extremely soft. What are we going to do in this case after making this diagnosis? Let's relieve the pain here in the middle claw by placing an orthopedic heel in the lateral claw, which will give the animal some relief and it can continue to produce normally.
Once we have finished attaching the heel, we let the cow loose. After having gained experience with the animals that I've treated, and after seeing the extent of their injuries, I think it's inhumane to have an animal that limps in the kind of topography you find in many parts of the country. These animals sometimes have to climb to reach the places that we as ranchers want them to reach, like to the milking pens. So why, if we know that the animal could have a different fate with some human assistance, would we subject them to this daily trek, twice a day, through muddy paths full of holes and rocks? So I don't think it's fair for us to subject an animal, like this cow, that gives us milk every day to these subhuman conditions, because that is simply inhumane. Bovine pathology is a good alternative. Let's treat them well and not abuse them. If a cow is limping, let it go at its own pace. If we have to wake up a little early to pick them up, let's wake up early then, but let's not hurry them. Because the pain of that limp can be considerable.